What digits do you see on the screen? How many of them are there? Would you say there is one, one? Because if so, I would agree. Let's write this as one, one. How about now? What digits do you see? Now there are two ones. Let's keep this up. Now there is one, two and one, one, which we can write like this. And now we have one, 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 two, and two ones. I think you get the idea. Let's keep up the pattern for a while and see what we get. This is only the 15th term, and already the strings are getting quite large. I should go ahead and mention that while these terms might look like numbers, it's more accurate to think of each term as a string of digits, not a traditional number you can do arithmetic with. Skipping ahead a bit, the 20th term looks like this. And this is the 40th term, except not exactly, because we still need to scroll down a little bit to view the whole string. This string contains 63,138 digits, which is quite impressive for only the 40th term in an infinite sequence. We can compute these terms using code, however, it quickly becomes challenging to calculate exact strings for higher terms. Luckily, we can use this formula to approximate the size of higher terms, where L sub n is the estimated number of digits in term n, and lambda is known as Conway's constant. This number, approximately 1.3, tells us the long-term growth rate of the sequence. In other words, each term is roughly 30% larger than the last once the sequence stabilizes. If we look at the predicted size of the 40th term, it agrees with the actual size of the 40th term with fairly great precision. This infinite sequence we are exploring is called the look and say sequence. You may be asking, are 1, 2, and 3 the only possible digits in these strings? And the answer is yes, unless the seed number contains a digit other than 1, 2, or 3, or contains a run of more than 3 of the same digit. So what do our sequences look like if we change the seed? Let's take a look at a few more examples. All of these sequences proceed much in the same way of the sequence with the seed of 1, though it's interesting to note that a seed that ends in, say, the number 9 will also have terms that end with the number 9. Most seeds lead to very similar expanding behavior, but there's one major exception. The string 2-2 two, two is set as two twos, and so a seed of 2-2 two, two produces a sequence consisting only of this string indefinitely. But aside from this one outlier, most seeds produce sequences that behave in strikingly similar ways. The shared behavior is captured by what John Conway called the Cosmological Theorem. Imagine a universe made entirely of digits. No particles, no atoms, just strings of digits describing other such strings. In 1987, mathematician John Conway discovered a remarkable structure hiding beneath the surface of the look and say sequence, a mathematical analogy to the birth, evolution, and decay of matter in the universe. The theorem says that every look and say sequence eventually splits or decays into a sequence of atomic elements. There are 92 elements containing only the digits 1, 2, and 3. The abundance is the average number of times a particular atom appears in a term of the look and say sequence per 1 million atoms when you look at very large terms far along in the sequence. For instance, out of every 1 million atomic units, about 91,000 of them are the hydrogen atom. 
Since hydrogen corresponds to the string 2,2, which doesn't grow or change, other atoms that produce 2,2 as a substring effectively terminate part of their sequence in hydrogen. Over time, this makes hydrogen appear disproportionately often. We see that arsenic is the rarest of these 92 elements. The decays into column tells us exactly that, what the element decays into. For instance, the starting element uranium, represented by the string 3, decays into protactinium, which is represented by the string 1,3. Some atoms decay into a single atom in the next step, while others decay into compounds made of multiple atoms. For example, magnesium decays into a concatenation of the strings for promethium and sodium. There are also two transuranic elements, neptunium and plutonium. Much like their real-world counterparts, these elements are unstable and short-lived. The digit n at the end of the string can be any value greater than 3, something that doesn't occur in stable atoms. They exist only because their seed included a digit above 3, and they quickly decay into atoms that only use 1s, 2s, and 3s. The look and say sequence starts as a simple game of description, but beneath the surface lies an entire ecosystem of mathematical atoms, stable, decaying, rare, and abundant, revealing the surprising order hidden within chaos.